of Morocco who still make pilgrimage from Lamuna every year, and Rebecca Walker, author of Black, White, and Jewish. I know you know how it is, girl, because I'm 100 percent black and 100 percent Jewish. And I'm about to lift every voice and sing Hatikva. Because now I've had my pace and cornrows and I got my yarmulkes and fitted hats. I eat my Seder plates with soul food, wear my gendavids on my dog tags. I get hollas for challah. And I gamble my guilt with my dollars. I represent. My culture is no longer abstract. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another awesome episode of your favorite cultural showcase, Culture in Maine. As always, I'm Carla Christopher, York City's Poet Laureate and your fearless host for the evening. And I have some awesome guests for you today. As you can guess from our opening clip, instead of doing my opening poem, I decided to let Aaron Samuels do his piece, Black and Jewish, in honor of Hanukkah, which today is the last night of. And I've got sort of a holiday theme going through the whole show because it is my absolute favorite time of year. I completely love it and I am so excited to get to share it with all of you. In fact, as many of you probably know if you have any social media connections at all, um, one of my personal heroes and one of the most influential public figures of our time, Nelson Mandela, passed away earlier today. And uh, my favorite quote of his, because people often describe me as saying what an optimist I am, he said, um, I am not an optimist, but I am a great believer in hope. And what I wanted to do tonight was bring some of the hope of the season, that it might not be going so great for you, the finances might not be perfect, the family situation might not be perfect, but as long as you have the opportunity to get up in the morning, and as long as there's still people doing beautiful and creative and inspired things, there's still hope for the world to be different. There's still hope for things to get better and there's still hope for today to be a great day. I know it sounds corny, but it's Christmas, so I'm allowed. Anyway, our first guests on the show tonight are incredible performers in a very resurrected but not often seen art, barbershop music. Now this is how I met these guys. It's midnight. I'm sitting in a round-the-clock diner, I'm working, using their Wi-Fi, tapping away at poetry, and these two big, beefy, burly guys walk up to me right up on me, and I'm like, ah! Totally freaked out, right? And I'm thinking, okay, big, angry truckers are coming at me, they're all muscular and Rrr. And then they say, we love your show, and we sing barbershop music, and we would love to share some of it with you. And I'm like, I'm busted for ever having a preconception in my life. So I said, I gotta have you guys on the show. Now, they're actually at Rocky Ridge Christmas Magic tonight. So they came in a little earlier to tape some of their favorite Christmas carols and some of their barbershop favorites and tell us a little bit about barbershop quartet music and how active it is here in the York area. So check them out. Christ the Savior is born Silent night Holy night All is calm All is bright Round yon Mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Holy night, 
Shepherds quake at the sight. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing. Savior is born. Christ is born. Jingle, 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 jingle all the way. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobtail ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh song tonight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh a day or two ago. I thought I'd take a ride. Soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. The horse was lean and lank. Misfortune seemed his lot. We got into a drifted bank. And we, we got a song. Jingle, 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 jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle, bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. A one-horse open sleigh. Hey! My, My darling, I am dreaming of the days gone by when you and I were sweethearts beneath the summer sky. Your hair has turned to silver, the gold has faded too. But still I will remember where I first met you. Down by the old mill stream, where I first met you, with your eyes so blue, dressed in Sixteen, my village queen, village queen, by the old mill stream, by the old, by the old mill stream. Mill stream. Gee, I wish that I could write a song, but every time I try it turns out wrong. Wouldn't it be great to write a song and get the whole wide world to sing along? If I could write a song and get the world to sing along, think of all the music there would be. The earth would start to ring, and everyone would sing a song of peace and love and harmony. With three million voices singing together, oh, what a happy sound. And to 
here's the thing. It's my music. It's me. Making the world go round. And people feeling sad would have a reason to be glad. I would do it with a melody. If I could write a song to get the world to sing along, how wonderful this world would be. If I could write a song to get the world to sing along, how wonderful this world would be. You see, how wonderful this world would be. Gee, what a world this would be. you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas and a happy new year good tidings to you wherever you are good tidings for christmas and a happy new year we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas and a happy new Uh, a quartet out of the White Rose Chorus, which is the York, Pennsylvania chapter of the Barbershop Harmony Society. Uh, the society was formed back in 1938 uh, by O.C. Cash down in Oklahoma. Uh, the York chapter was one of the first chapters in the region and was founded in 1946. Uh, the chapter gave rise to other barbershop chapters in the area, including the Harrisburg chapter, the Carlisle chapter, the Hanover chapter, and the Lancaster chapter. Uh, of which all other than Carlisle seem to be doing quite well. Uh, the quartet's name is the, the uh, first capital four. This is actually our first performance together as that, uh, as that name. Uh, three of us are former members of the Piper's Four Quartet, which was founded by around 1980. Uh, Ed is the only surviving member from that original quartet. Okay, we'll take care of you then. Okay. <laughs> I think one of the things that, that we have, have done is entertained in the area. Um, one of our specialties is going into nursing homes and retirement pl uh, places of retirement. And usually when we are in there, the people in the audience know the songs and you look back and they're all mouthing the words because a lot of them heard these songs on the radio. The songs that we performed for Barbershop were written between 1890 and 1910. So therefore, the group that now is in retirement homes or older, or maybe perhaps not, not with us anymore, uh, grew up listening to those and hearing their parents sing them or, or whatever. So I think um, the society was an all-male society until 1978 when uh, the Sweet Adeline started. And we, we do have two separate groups today for the men and the women. There are some mixed quartets where you'll have two men and two women in a quartet. Uh, but for the most part, the, the society that we're representing here is, is a male, male a cappella group. I guess we're the largest male a cappella group in the world. Things uh, have been really happening for us uh, recently. Uh, back in the 1980s, we were uh, among the first groups, uh, in fact, the first uh, uh, chapter in the Mid-Atlantic District with over 100 members. Uh, that uh, slowly but surely uh, fell off, and, and by 2008, we were down to eight members uh, uh, participating with the group. Uh, since then, uh, we've lost a few members, but we've gained enough where we're up to about 15 uh, performing members. We just had our first annual show uh, back in September at West York High School. Uh, that was our first performance uh, uh, on, on stage as a, a show since 2007. So the group has uh, come a long way in about five years. Uh, we're always looking for young men to come sing with us. Uh, we're not looking necessarily for very good singers. What we uh, really need is people that can sing and pitch and just enjoy singing and harmonizing uh, with other men. We just uh, really enjoy going out and, and singing together as a group. And the better we get as a, as a singing group, uh, the more enjoyable it is for the individual members. Uh, our members, uh, in, in barbershop in general, uh, the membership tends to be getting uh, a lot older. Uh, the average age in our group when I joined in 2008 was somewhere around 70, 75. Uh, the group is now down to an average age of, I'd say, right around 60. I think half of the guys are under 60, and the other half are over 60. So <laughs> we, are, we are getting younger and slowly getting a little larger as well. I think the, the makeup of a barbershop quartet would, would be important. We are, we are four different, different voices. 
I am uh, Bruce Van Order, I'm the tenor, which means that I will be <coughs> singing the, the high notes. Usually I am above the melody, which is sung by the lead or the second tenor, which in the quartet is Ed Simmons. And then the other harmony parts would be, all the way over on my right, would be David Kelly, who is the baritone, and Roger Phillips, who is the bass. So the, the baritone is probably one of the, the harder parts to sing, because the baritone goes above and below the lead while, while singing. And so that's, that's where our, our sound comes from. Uh, we, so we technically have a melody, which the other three parts are harmonizing to. If we pronounce our vowels all the same and everything, we will actually get what we call a ring, or you can hear a chord above what we're, what we're singing. I'm not sure we're ringing anything this morning, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that's basically the way the, the, quartet, the quartet works. So in, in uh, most men's quartetting, the first tenor usually has the melody a lot of times when you sing in, in, in church quartets. But in barbershop, the melody is usually only with the second tenor or the lead, as we, as we call him. And he leads the quartet through by his singing. He's not waving his hand usually, but, but he is uh, through his singing. Those guys are amazing, yes? They are a true piece of York history. And you can catch them at www.whiterosechorus.com. They have tons of performances coming up. In fact, they're going to be at the Holly T. concert at First St. John's Lutheran on West King Street at 3.30 on Sunday, December 8th. And they're also going to be at the American Music Theater in Lancaster before their first Noel show. Now, normally the tickets for that are $40, but if the White Rose Chorus gets you in, they're only $25. So if you contact them through the website, you can get the White Rose Chorus show, plus you can get the great American Music Theater show. And they will also be out in February delivering Singing Valentines. So if you have a Singing Valentine dream that you've always wanted to give to someone, make sure you go to whiterosechorus.com and you can make sure that they do that for you. However, we've only got an hour and I've got something that I am so geeked about, I just, I need to dive right into it. And that is the wizard of the cigar box guitar. Now. Shane Spiel, everybody knows him. He's a local fave, and he's the king. But we have one of the most accomplished cigar box players. You saw a little bit of him and got to meet him in our cigar box special a few weeks ago. But his name is Justin Johnson. And I can't even say where he's from because he and his partner, Nikki, travel the road and they take cigar box spirituality everywhere they go. In fact, he works with builders and conceptualists from all over the world. And he just says he gets inspired by their instruments and that's why he does what he does. However, he just released a new CD of holiday classics in a way that I promise you've never heard them before. And before he unveils the CD, and the full concert on Sunday at the York Emporium, he agreed to come here and give us a sampling of what a Roots holiday actually sounds like. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Culture and Main stage, the wizard of the cigar box guitar himself, the indomitable, indefatigable, and fabulous Justin Johnson. <laughs> Thank you. 
last one was God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, and uh, I'll do one of everyone's favorites, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I know you just, it makes you want to applaud. Like, you just can't help it. I'm <laughs> like, like yeah, we need a studio sure. recording of being, everybody going, Yeah, Whoa! I need some canned applause. <laughs> right, right, right. So now, tell me about the album release that you have coming up two days from now, on Sunday. Yes, we've got, a, well, an album release coming up on Sunday on uh, at two, 2 o'clock p.m. at the York Emporium right yes. here in York. And um, awesome it's going to be for, for the new Christmas album, which you have right there, Roots Christmas. And I, like you were saying, I love and, um, you know, I'm, I'm dedicating my career right now to really showcasing these beautiful Roots instruments from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And um, as the holidays were approaching, uh, Nikki and I thought, what better way, uh, we both love Christmas, and what better way to celebrate mm -hmm. and share it with everyone, whether we can see them or not. Um, than to come out with a Christmas album on these instruments and showcasing the work of these great builders and, and the tones that these instruments have and, and really focus on that, but also focus just on, on Christmas and on the, the songs that everyone loves and, 
and doing them in a in a bluesy, rootsy, jazzy sort of way that we we really awesome. enjoy um, enjoy composing them. And uh, so we we figured we uh, actually just got them today, so they're hot off the presses. Ooh, and uh, they we feel picked them, warm. They feel warm to me. Picked them up in the factory in New Jersey, and uh, we called Jim uh, <laughs> Jim Lewin up uh, from over at the York Emporium, yeah. and we said we're mm-hmm. going to be in your neck of the woods a couple of days after we pick up the the cds so uh, how about we have a big party at your place and uh, invite anyone who wants to come and and have a good time celebrate christmas and uh you know and and celebrate the album coming out and do it all at the same time so it's kind of like a a christmas card it's the audio christmas card to all the fans and and all the people that you've worked with with the building and stuff now some of these guitars i mean there is there is an image which i don't know if you can see at home but some of the guitars that are used on this album are absolutely works of art all oh, on their absolutely. own. I mean, they are just gorgeous and composed out of every different kind of <laughs> recycled and repurposed materials possible. What are some of the things that went into making the guitars on this album? Well, we have uh, cigar box guitars like this one that are completely That's handmade, awesome. the neck, the pickups, um, wow. and all all art- artistically crammed into a cigar box in a, in a beautiful way, to, which uh, there's just magic that goes into every one. We, we also have uh, guitars that um, were made out of silverware boxes. I have a big hollow body, and it's on the first song on the <laughs> album, made out of a silverware box and a wooden water ski for a neck. That's and awesome. um, just the way they sound when you put these, these uh, materials together is unbelievable. And uh, there's also, uh, and now we can add after our European tour, which we just got back from, we can add uh, some guitars from over in Europe as well. And uh, there's a beautiful guitar on this album from a, a cigar box guitar store that just opened up in Paris, France, that we, we went to when we were in Europe and uh, met the owner at a festival. And he said, right. come to my shop. And uh, we ended up getting a beautiful, uh, it's just a work of art, um, uh, custom-made, handmade uh, cigar box guitar from Paris. And so the cigar box guitar movement is big in Europe? Oh, it's it's amazing. I mean, <laughs> it's a uh, well. We we were surprised too. We knew that people um, from from being online knew that people loved cigar box guitars and roots music, and of course right. blues and roots music in general. Right. But when we got over there, it was um, not only did they they know about it and build them, but they're just as addicted to them, if not more than than anyone I've really? met. And there's also actually a. Um, there's something special, I think, about the exotic element there. It's from across the okay. seas, and it's it's American, and I think they like it in a different way than than people in America like it because we can we sort of feel like we own it in a way. But, well, um, blues and and jazz. I mean, a lot of people arguably state that that's the one art form that America really pioneered and and has sort of the monopoly on. Absolutely. So. And, to see that being how that's going to be interpreted by people from a completely different cultural background has got to be wild. That that's one of my uh, my favorite memories from being over there was seeing that appreciation from a different perspective, and it makes you appreciate it in a different way, as well. Um, For sure. You know, in that same sense, and so yeah, not only uh, not only did we meet people who played over there, meet people who build uh, these instruments, but there's a whole store dedicated to it in Paris. Uh, in the Netherlands and England, we met um, builders wow. and players from all over Europe while we were there. It was really inspiring. So now people can, of course, they can go to justinjohnsonlive.com and they can get information about the shows and they can get the album and they can come and meet you on Sunday at the York Emporium at 384 West Market Street. Um, where else can people come and find you this holiday season when they want to well, pick the album up? If if you can't make it on Sunday or if you just want to catch a later show, um, we'll also be playing at uh, Beer Mongers in Dallas Town uh, Saturday night <laughs> From at From the bookstore to the PM. beer joint. <laughs> so we'll be playing Saturday at Beer Mongers at 10 p.m. and then Sunday at York Emporium at 2 p.m. And we'll have the Christmas album available at both shows. And Awesome. And I'll be doing all the songs on all the instruments that are on there. So I'll be doing the songs, oh, nice. performing the songs just as they were recorded on the album, too. So you can actually see the instruments that created the songs. And then, uh, like you, you showed the back of the album here, right. uh, you can actually see which of the guitars was oh, on each like song. A key. So that's very handy. If you say, well, oh, I like, the, <laughs> I like the sound of that guitar, or, or I like the sound of that that melody on that song you can actually look and find the information on the person who built it off of my website and 
if you like one of those guitars, you can see which songs it was on and then listen to it and you say, okay, so you connect the, the guitar and the image nice. and the builder and in that part of the world, you can actually connect it right with the sounds you're hearing when you play the album too. So we wanted to make sure you could do that when you listen to the album. That's amazing. Well, I can't wait for the show. Well, I didn't know I had an option of two, I can't wait to catch some shows. And don't forget, please, make sure you go on justinjohnsonlive.com so that you can get the album, you can get his amazing other albums, and you can get information on all of their cross-country, the never-ending roadshow tour of Justin and Nikki's adventures as they travel cross-country spreading the gospel of Cigar Box Guitar. Now, we're talking local music tonight, and we love that Justin Johnson is part of our local music scene, especially for this weekend and this holiday album. But there are two guys who are pretty much the coolest thing that's going on in local music, or at least they can find all the coolest stuff that's going on in local music. So check this out, and then we'll get to talk to them. Um, I think it's the wide range of influences and the amount of talent and dedication that a lot of people around here have to music now and to the local music scene that inspires me as a fan and a musician. I think that it's already been an established scene and it has been for years, but it's starting to really build up and get a lot bigger and a lot, a lot more people are playing music, a lot more people are playing out, a lot more people are writing music. still offers a really, really nice location for a lot of, like, bigger acts. Um, and then there's the Depot, which is probably the premier place around here to go see bands that uh, Kimon has done its best in the area, uh, trying to get bigger and bigger acts in and providing a better and better place to play. It's definitely the best open mic night as a musician. We've been doing the open mic for probably about almost two years now, and I think we've grown it now People from even Harrisburg, Lancaster, Hanover, Gettysburg are coming specifically to this open mic because the crowd is great. They give good response to, to features. Full bands can come in and play. Yeah, there's a lot of cool spots. My, my personal favorite probably to play. I really like the depot. Um, the sound there is really good. The people are really cool. It's just a laid back atmosphere. On the local level, I usually have bands contact me for a headlining spot and I let them choose who they bring to open. I let friends of friends, you know, play with each other that way. The atmosphere for the night is a friendly one. Everybody knows everybody and it's usually a good night. I think that's why it's so important to keep your, your ear to the ground in the music scene right now because anybody can come out of anywhere with the most well, unique sound and it doesn't have to be from a large city, it doesn't have to be from anywhere in particular, it just has to be from the dedication that they have to their own art. playing shows as much as possible, going to open mics, just being there, you know, trying to spread my music, but also, you know, help other musicians spread theirs and, you know, make music with other musicians, so I hope that I'm an influencer of the music scene here in New York. Thanks. It sounds. It can be. 
Ooh, what really goes on in your shoots? Are those the, the videos you have to pay for? The non-free ones? Those videos are not available to the public just quite yet. Ooh. We need the public to participate to make the videos to release to the public. Wow. Wow. Mm. Let me find out. Well, before we get into our, our little private holiday show right here, Culture and Maine just took an entirely new turn that it never has before. That's why we love live television. Why don't we fill our home audience in about what exactly the Underground Lounge is for the people that have not heard about it before? Well, we, uh, we invite musicians sometimes into uh, the basement of my house, which <laughs> uh, that's where we primarily do it. But sometimes we go to their practice box. I can't have drummers in my basement. But either way, we profile them. We give them a voice. We kind of try to bridge the gap between the artist and the people that may have just seen them at a, at a show. You know, you don't always get to pick up the CD when you go to see an artist perform. Right. It's a recession. Right. <laughs> True enough. And, uh, <laughs> and there's a lot of music around here. That'd be purchasing a whole lot of CDs every time you go. But, um, yeah. yeah, we just we talk to them about the music they make, and we provide another outlet for them to be heard and a little bit of a deeper look into why they write songs, how long they've been writing songs, how long they've been playing, just really give you a feel for who these people are. So what made you guys decide, one, to work together and to create this project as a unit? And then also, what makes you guys decide what's something that should be featured on the Underground Lounge? I mean, I know these guys are unsigned and women. They're mostly, they're unsigned, they're local, they're incredibly talented, but is that all it takes to be an Underground Lounge artist? Well, it started with Wally having an idea to be a documentarian of sorts and kind of profile the local musicians. I kind of took that idea home and um, expanded on it with the idea of putting out a regular production, similar to yourself, in a podcast form right. so that our listeners could have it on their phone, on their tablets or computer and listen to it regularly. Um, what it takes to get on our show is... <laughs> Uh, just a similar theory to what we have going on, a DIY mentality, um, just kind of get it done at all costs, roots mentality, <laughs> as Justin had right. mentioned kind of before during his segment. Um, I don't know. We don't really keep people from joining us. Yeah, it's it was interesting. When, when I suggested the idea of doing a documentary, it was more like film concept because he had done some filming before, right. and I knew that. And uh, we had a not a, a close relationship, but I knew him. And I knew he could do that, and I had this idea, and it, it's kind of weird to me that it didn't dawn on me right away to go to like a radio or a podcast format because I love radio. Like it's my preferred mm. medium. I'd rather have really? seven radios in my house than a TV. I agree completely. I love radio. I, I listen, listen to, to sports really? on radio. This American Life is amazing. Like you don't miss the, the visuals not of at all. the performance. No, I, and so I'm even a visual guy, and no, not at all. But it, does it help you like focus better on the music and and make the music? Interestingly, less it makes it makes me focus better on other things I can do with earbuds in my ears. A lot of times, uh. I. Uh, I mean, I'm not supposed to keep earbuds in my ears when I'm at work, but during slow periods, like I'll just have but. one in and it, it gives me something to do, something, even cleaning my house, things like that. One earbud in your ear, you don't got to worry about being out of earshot then, and you can just do whatever That's you want to do and you listen to it. You don't got to sit there and vegetate in front of a television just staring at a screen. Mindlessly. That's boring nice. to me. I love radio. You can do other things. Nice. Well, let's check out one of the clips because you do occasionally, occasionally they do video work. One of the clips of a former Culture and Main guest, actually, Soji. They got some behind the scenes footage on him. Don't 
Sometimes you gotta, just gotta let it die. Sometimes you gotta, just gotta let it die. Now, do you guys prefer hearing the unplugged, sort of intimate versions that match up with the interviews? Or do you like when you can get the, the whole bands in there and they can like plug in and rock out and jam? It's pretty much based conceptually on having the stripped down, unplugged versions. I love acoustic music. I always liked hearing um, alternate takes of songs that I loved. I feel like uh. it gives you, a lot of times you have an easier time understanding the lyrics, getting a feel That's for true. what's going on and everything. But um, sometimes we can't. Like, the music doesn't allow for it. We covered Buzz Chopper. They're a surf band, you know? Yeah, yeah. The you, unplugged acoustic Buzz Chopper doesn't yeah. even sound right. No, you need the drums. You need Aaron playing the tom rolls, just like surf right. music is known for. So it won't work. So we, we work around what we can, you know? And a lot of, it's, great to have, it's great to have just one or two people playing a stripped-down version. But if we need to have a full band, I just can't have drums in my basement. we got to go to you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that. Now, first of all, if you do not know, if you have not already been Googling the Underground Lounge, you can find them online at loungeonline.net. And you can check out all the back podcasts and everything there, which if you scroll through, you can see that there has been a real evolution of what you guys have included and the quality of the musicians, even the quality of the sound. And I know that Patrick was talking about on his Facebook social media that he's really excited about as you guys move forward because you've done over 30 episodes yes. 30, now. 33. Yep. So what's coming next for The Lounge? What can we look forward to coming from you guys? Well, I think the ultimate goal would be to take it on the road and kind of hit smaller towns and markets and uh -huh. continue this idea um, abroad and kind of just tour the country the same way a musician would and just kind of help profile and share their art the same way Alan Lomax did back in like the 1930s and 40s. He was recording uh, all the black musicians sitting on their back porch recording for next to nobody. And he was documenting that stuff for the Library of Congress. That's how we know who Lead Belly is, man. And all these, this roots music, even like prison songs, things like that. He's one of my heroes. And uh, he just awesome. rolled around with like s <laughs> recording machines with a wax cylinder and a microphone and put it in front of these cats sitting on their back, you know, on their back porch and documented all that for the Library of Congress. And I don't expect to, I don't, I don't expect anything. I just love what he did, and it inspires me to do what we do. We're, we're giving a voice to those people that don't have radio. They don't have anything else behind them. There's so many people, and it's so easy to record these days. Technology is beautiful. How do you find these guys? They're not represented. They're not splashed all over the web. You didn't find them on YouTube because you're the one putting them on YouTube. We go to bars and talk. Put feet in pavement. <laughs> really, yeah. just put feet we in pavement. We get out there. And we go to shows. We interact with them. We listen to what they are playing. Um, we just don't go to a nice hot spot because it's a Saturday night. We'll go. We'll buy the CDs. We'll interact with them, talk to them after their sets. Um, hell, even open mics. Check out open mics. This town is 
wonderful with their open mic scene. There's an open mic you can catch on any yeah, off night, of, night without there without the, any night that's not paying for a set. Uh, you can catch an open mic at a number of different venues. We've booked a number of artists just off interactions from them, um, yeah. and just friends of friends of friends and. I don't know. The well is deeper than we ever thought when we started this. Are you are you ever surprised at how much talent, considering that right now you've been still focused on local music and stuff from York County and the immediate York area? I used to be surprised. Yeah. Not Any now. more I expect it because I've learned that it's it's there. People are out there just because you don't hear them every day. It doesn't mean they're not out there grinding it up at night after they get done working their job, just like I do. I love it. I love going out there and getting that release with them. Wow. And then getting to bring that to the people yeah, I've always that loved capture talking that to musicians. feeling. I've always loved talking to musicians. And I'm never going to stop talking to musicians, so I figure we might as well put a microphone down in front of us, make them play. Well, they play a little private concert for me and him, man. Yep. Oftentimes in my basement. It's yep. beautiful. <laughs> but you get to bring your favorite musicians to a private concert for you. That is pretty amazing. And then talk to them specifically about the, where did that come from. People don't get to ask that question when you just see somebody on a stage. No. We get to ask that when they're sitting on my and couch. And even when they make it big, they're still doing the dance to promote an album or anything. They're not having like an actual personal conversation. Again, heavily influenced by radio. Yep. That's incredible. Well, please make sure that you visit these guys. Go to loungeonline.net and check out the amazing musicians that they profile, the insightful questions, and all kinds of special projects. Like, they have a CD of some of the greatest indie musicians in the York area that they've put out, limited edition. Other projects come in, and we're gonna let Elijah Cross, also a past culture and main guest and lounge online guest, see us out of the show. But thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you to Patrick and Wally for thank joining you for us. us. And Justin Johnson and the White Rose Chorus. You guys are always amazing. Make sure to find us on Facebook at Culture in Maine. Make sure to find us on Twitter. Make sure to email us at cultureinmaine at gmail.com. We want to hear your ideas, thoughts, suggestions for segments, all of that. Have a blessed and safe week. And we'll see you again very soon. I've never been on the other end of this There's nothing you do that will make me leave your side So there's no blaming you when something goes amiss 